So we've seen how to do continuity and resistance now. So let's take a look at voltage in DC, how we measure DC voltage. When you're doing repairs and most things that aren't sort of house main electrics, you'll find that nearly everything handheld and everything generally in repair is mostly DC. We'll take a look at voltage AC after, but for now let's take a look at this game gear. Let's measure the low battery and reset voltages and show you a little bit of how the game gear works while we're doing that and how to use the voltage DC plus a bit of continuity to validate that this console should boot. I'll also show you some of the pitfalls of measuring DC voltage and also where to be aware of dangerous high voltage as well. So let's jump in and start some basic measurements. So we've got a game gear here. I'm just going to use a clean juice to power the board up and we'll take a look at how the board functions. If I just connect the clean juice, I can now power this from battery and turn it on and off. And you can see here the red light comes on. So if I turn off, see this light, it will come on. So that's the console booting. But let's say it didn't boot, or in general, you just want to measure around this board. Uh, we take our multimeter again, turn it to volts DC, which in this case is a V with flat lines, because that's how DC voltage is. If you see the wavy line, that's AC. We'll do that next. But voltage DC is this flat line here. Probes again in the ground and the voltage side, not the amp side. Turn your multimeter on, and with your probes, you have your black this time, which will typically be when you're measuring things ground, which we'll go through after, it's not always that. But you'll typically just put your brown lead on the ground of the system. So the, the place where ground normally comes from is the things powering the device. So this battery ultimately provides a black and a red, the black will be ground. Uh, ground will then, I know on my board, connect to all the shields. So ground's here, for example, ground's here. Or if you wanted to be sure, you'd go straight to the um, actual black pin of the battery down here. So you'd first want to find ground in your system. So let's use what we already know for a minute. Go to continuity on the multimeter and put us into continuity mode. So we get the beep. And I know on my board, that this is ground, but if I was unsure, I could tap on the ground lead of the battery, which is powering the system. So now I know that's ground, I can touch there. We can go over to the rest of the game gear. There's a ground point. Uh, you could have the lead coming in, sort of middle pins are ground. But I find a good place to just rest your ground lead is the contrast wheel, the metal pad on the contrast wheel. So when we know that, that means we can move this up out of the way, and we can test easier by keeping the black lead on ground. Switch your meter back to volts DC. And in this instance, we're gonna turn on the board and then we're gonna put our ground on the ground pad here. And you can see the power leads coming in. Be very careful of this area here, which I'll discuss uh, in the AC video. But this is 100 volts AC, these kind of four pins here. So just watch, don't put your hands down here. We'll go through the safety in terms of the consoles, such as the Game Gear, which is one of very few that has high voltage on um, a battery powered application. So just be really careful around here, like genuinely do not go near there with your hand and touch it, it will hurt. Uh, but with ground on here, we can measure these pins, which are just coming from this power supply. So the one over here, is, as you see there, 34.74 volts DC as this measures. The one next to it is five volts in this case, and this is the clean juice output in this level. An original power supply would be different here. This would be probably nine volts. Uh, you've got your reference pin here. And again, notice my hands are right by here, but I'm resting on the screen, I'm not touching down here. Uh, you can go over to this end, which is the five volts into the system again. So all there is to measuring uh, voltage DC is to stick the red lead on uh, wherever you want to measure and typically the black lead on ground. So we stuck the black lead on here, the red on here. You'll get five volts. Now what happens if you flip it round? It'll still work, but if you put the red lead on ground and the ground lead or the black lead on where you want to measure, you can see we've got minus five volts. So let me just talk a little about what we're measuring here. So there really is not that much more to measuring volts DC. You put your black on the ground, your red on the place you want to measure. But there are a lot of pitfalls in actually doing this. There's a lot of things that will go wrong 
that will give you false readings. So let's talk about what all the problems with measuring are, all the things you might not expect. And again, remember the importance of being able to rely on your results. So the first one is when you're measuring a voltage on a voltmeter, it doesn't mean that there's say five volts at this pin. It just means there's a potential difference between where this lead and this lead is that is five volts. And even then it doesn't necessarily mean that that's all it is because as you'll see in a moment, you can measure AC voltage and it will give misreadings. So I mentioned here, these pins here are a hundred volts. So if I was to put say, we're in volts DC, and I was just put my ground lead on ground and measure this line that I know is 100 volts, you can see it measures 6 volts. Now if I just quickly swap to AC and measure the potential to there, you can see we've got some dangerous potential voltage there. On accurate meters, when you're measuring over, you'll actually get, you know, in this case, 400 volts. On regular meters that aren't as expensive as this, the slight bit of load will bring down that value and make it around 100 volts. But because this is an expensive fluke, you can see the true potential there is above mains voltage. So measures 400, yet if we swap to just volts DC, apparently this is a safe 9 volts, which it is not, as we've just seen. So step one, voltage DC is not going to detect AC voltages, even dangerous ones. So if you're working on anything that you suspect might be dangerous, probe around in volts AC and DC first. The second is, this is not, as I mentioned, the second is the importance of where your black lead is. This is the reference as which we measure the potential difference from this point to the black, the red lead. So if we have a good ground and we measure 5 volts, then we can be assured that, oh, the measurement is 5 volts. But what if the black lead wasn't on ground, or say this was a bad ground with a break and it doesn't actually go back to the battery's ground. So let's pick up, say, the wrong side of uh, a button that is not ground, and we measure. You can see we get 0 0.006 volts. If we go on the 34 volt line with the black probe, presuming we thought this was ground perhaps, and then touch on the 5 volt side, you can see it says we've got minus 28 volts over here. So if you're not 100% sure where your black probe is, and if it is truly referencing the ground of the system, then your voltage readings will be way off. So let's say this was a bad ground and it was just physically cut or partially damaged. When you're measuring here to here and you get 5 volts, it doesn't mean that the system is going to receive 5 volts because the system's ground comes from this battery, goes through the battery, the ground comes down and into the middle pins here. So this is actually the ground that the system is going to receive. So you measure from here to here. And that will be assured at this point to this point we do have 5 volts. Now let's take a more practical example. If we turn the board over and go to the actual A6 of this board, that you can see look quite dirty and grimy and possibly faulty, let's say we wanted to measure if these chips were receiving power. However, the true test, as we mentioned, like the power connector at the top, if you want to measure if this chip specifically is receiving 5 volts, you need to measure the ground point on this chip and the 5 volts on this chip. Because this chip is its own device and it's expecting ground coming in at one point and 5 volts at another. So having ground up here is completely irrelevant to a true reading on this chip. So I believe the top corner here is ground on this chip. And then we can just go down the bottom corner here. And you can see we still get 4 volts. But the important difference is... If we got 4 volts here, but there was no ground here, this pad was broke. Measuring properly like this on the device's ground and power might show a different reading. So whenever you're diagnosing, you can start by just tapping on ground here. But if you're suspecting a problem somewhere, like say this should be 5 volts, then drop down and find the ground on the pad you're after and test directly between um, you know, the, the local area. If this wasn't ground, you know what to do then. You change to continuity mode and you probe a working ground to here and if it's missing, make a wire join. So when testing with DC, make sure to test locally in the area, not just a generic ground at the top. Say we want to also just check if this battery is working. So say we have a clean juice and we want to test if this is functioning. The first thing you can do is disconnect the battery so it's under no load. 
and on the back of the battery terminal you should see the little probes that you can fit your leads into black and red so if we just take our probes and put the black one into the black area and the red one careful not to short the leads together into the red side you can see we get 3.93 volts so that's checking the voltage of a battery a lipo is fully charged at 4.2 and nearly fully dead at about 3.5 so 3.9 it's probably about 70 percent charged you could then plug it into the actual board and let's say we wanted to test if this clean just was functioning on the output pins we'd first turn the power on we'd go from ground here which we know we could check first that the battery has actual voltage coming in so we could probe on the red lead just to make sure the connector is good and there's that battery's 3.9 volts still after that if you know the board you're working on then you know where to probe so I know down here for example the bottom of these caps is 5 volts so I can touch there that's the regulator generating the 5 volt rail so that's good the bottom two pins here are that connection so these two pins should be the 5 volts the next three are ground so if you wanted to check them you'd put in continuity to ground uh, the next pin up is the reference for when the battery goes low so it's currently 0 volts because it isn't low the one above should be the 5 volts again which it is that one's nothing and the top one should be the 34 volt and you can see the 34 volts there if we turn this switch off for modern screens this 34 volts will collapse and you can see here's an example of it slowly discharging so that's because these capacitors here are storing the voltage so as you've turned it off it takes a while to completely collapse and there you can see it lowering and it will eventually go to zero volts so that's how you test say a clean just for example when you're probing around make sure that your lead doesn't short things out so these are small components we don't want to bridge over the top of these and cause a dead short so just bear in mind when you're probing around try and be accurate with your probes and not to short out other points on the board now there's much more to learn about voltage dc but to get you started this is enough knowledge general rule of thumb is find ground with black start with going back to the source power so if you're unsure go all the way back to the batteries or the mains connector that comes in anything to do with mains power if you're ever plugging in a mains lead be super careful uh, if you're unsure ask somebody that knows or just don't go near the board if you're unsure if there's mains voltage on once you've found your ground you keep your black lead on ground make some common measurements you know should work such as the actual battery connector that we know is a you know a common voltage start by effectively proving your equipment works by getting your first measurement and then go around and probe the suspect areas and then go around and kind of probe the suspect areas for readings only ever use the voltage dc as a reference so never rely on it 100 percent do further tests and assumptions if things are off make sure your ground is ground you through continuity make sure there's no dirt on the connectors you're probing all the same principles apply with the voltage the same as it does with resistance there's a lot that goes into making sure your readings are accurate and not just random so start with a baseline of something known so you can test that your meter is working we'll see how to use these techniques as i do live repairs and show you the techniques we've learned so far and we'll diagnose that's it for this one, and let's take a look at voltage AC next.